Welcome everybody to Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV Live. This is our uh, webinar, our live streaming webinar. I'm Jim, host of the uh, show tonight. And I, first thing I want to do is I want to apologize to you. We're not going to really, we're going to have to wing it tonight because uh, the guest we was going to have on the show this evening had to cancel, last minute cancellation. So uh, we're going to have to do the bass fishing thing later on. Um, I just have to apologize. So I think what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to, where it's getting so close to uh, fishing season across the, the north and the northwest, uh, you know, with the, with the um, um, seasons changing and everything and spring coming up, what I'm going to do, I guess, is I'm just going to go ahead and do a refresher on catfishing because a lot of you guys are going to be getting out there. You're going to be getting ready to start catfishing. And uh, I know I am, and I haven't done it yet this year, and we're a little bit behind the time. So I know I'm really looking forward to getting out there and doing it. So we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. I'm going to show you some of the tips and techniques that we've learned uh, from folks like you and from sponsors and guides and just everybody there that's been associated with us. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to just show you some of the things that they've showed us and some of the things we've learned. <clears throat> So that's what we're going to be doing on this evening's show, and I hope you enjoy it. Now, um, I guess we'll, I want to start out with an introduction to catfishing, and, and we'll talk about, I guess, the different types of catfish, okay? Now, down here in North Carolina, we basically have got four different types of catfish. Now, I'm going to probably miss some of these catfish guys uh, because there's a lot of different ones across the country, okay? So I know I'm probably going to miss uh, some of them cat, some some of the catfish. But anyhow, down here in North Carolina and throughout the South, we have our boar four basic types is a um, a bullhead catfish, which is kind of a small, punky little fat catfish. We also have uh, uh, flathead catfish. We also have Arkansas blue. And we have two different species of channel cat. And what I mean by two different species of channel cat is that we have what we call down here our hybrid channel cat, which is kind of a goldish yellow, has a goldish yellow tint. And they um, have dots, like I guess like brook trout on the side of them, little speckled dots on the side. That's our hybrid. And then we have our native catfish down here which is the, um, the one that is um, more grayish, dark gray, and that type of thing, uh, a blackish gray. They're, they're more of our native catfish. So them are basically the four type that we have down here. Now, as far as techniques for fishing for the catfish, there's, there's probably a thousand different techniques out there, okay? We've got techniques all the way from uh, uh, tight lining uh, over the side of the boat to uh, t uh, not tight line, but jug fishing. We can, you know, there's guys out there that are still jug fishing. Jug fishing goes back now a long ways. I mean, you know, back in the 30s and 40s, you know, cat fishing when it came out, jug fishing was very popular. A lot of you folks up north, I don't know I, your rules and regulations. I'm not too sure if you can do. Uh, jug fishing up there, but um, you know that that's just something down here we can do. Now, one type is like I said, one type is jug fishing, and basically, what jug fishing is is really it's just a jug. And what guys do is they'll tie a line on to the end of these things. All right, you really need to have a boat to do this. You can't do it from shore. We'll get to shore fishing here in just a little bit, but. They take a jug, and you can use a jug. Some guys use antifreeze jugs. They use gallon milk jugs. They use all different types of jugs you can use to, to do uh, jug fishing. And it's a real effective thing to do. It's probably not my most favorite, but it's a real effective thing to do. Uh, when you throw out your jug, you tie on line on the end of your jug. Now, this is 50-pound monofilament, and 
you tie on anywhere from four foot because not all cat foot fish are on the bottom. Catfish will suspend. So, you know, I like to use, if I'm going to do this, a variety of different line lengths. If I'm going to be fishing in 30 feet of water, I like to have several jugs with, you know, 25 feet of line on it. I like to have some with four feet of line and, you know, 20 feet of line and just different depths. So, and what you do is you don't use the weight when you're doing this technique. You take and you put your hook on here. I like to use the circle hook, you know, somewhere around a number four circle hook, number five circle hook. Tie it on there and you put your bait on. And all you do is you have the guy in the back of the boat. And when he's driving along, the guy in the front, he's just baiting up and undoing the line and just throwing these jugs out on the left and right side. And then basically all you've got to do is you're just going to let the wind and the current do the job for you. And what will end up happening is when the catfish comes along and he, he gets on that line, that bottle will pop up. And it's going to be just like a bobber, okay? When you get a catfish on there, you'll know it'll be just like a bobber. One thing to do is if you're going to fish at nighttime, this is a daytime technique and it's also a nighttime technique. One thing you're going to do, you want to do, if you're going to be out there at nighttime, and what you'll do is you'll, you'll just go off and crappy fish or something, and you'll check your jugs about every half hour. You're going to want to paint this with a fluorescent paint. And by painting this with a fluorescent paint, when you're shining your flashlight around, looking for uh, your jugs, it will show up really, really good, okay? So that's one method. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to get rid of this. And another thing is now with what they call a noodle. Now, a lot of guys are making these. You will be able to go very shortly to our YouTube page and our website, and you'll be able to see how these are made. These are really neat. They're almost like a, a tip-up that some of you guys up in the north might be using. Um, if you get familiar with an ice fishing tip-up, it, it kind of acts the same way. And what this is, is 18 inches of PVC. And it has two end caps on it, and it's sealed. Inside here, I have a two-ounce weight. I'm going to explain to you what that does in a minute. We have a screw eye on the back, and it's glued in there also. This particular one here, I'm using Daycron line. And, the, and I like to use Daycron. I'll tell you why. Because it's not like heavy-duty monofilament, 50, 60-pound test monofilament, which kind of... Uh, kind of keeps the memory. Daycron will just kind of, as you can see, it just kind of lays out. So, and it's really strong. Uh, this here, I think, is 35 pound test Daycron, and it's 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 like a braided line. Is what it is, I guess, it's an older type, older style braided line. What they used to use, but that's what I like to use. I set, once again the same thing. I tie my number five or number six. Depend it, the hook size really depends on the bait you're using. It depends on the type of catfish you're targeting. Number five size hook, bait hook or circle hook really works the best. Now what happens is that when you're out um, fishing with these, you're not going to throw these because you're going to do what they call loading up the noodle. They call this a noodle. I don't know why. It don't look like a noodle to me, but that's what they call it, okay? Um, it has a weight inside. So what you're going to do is before you throw it out, you want to make sure that that weight is at this end, okay? And you're going you're gonna to set that thing out with your bait. There again, your line just determines on the different, um, the different lengths of line you want for the different depths of water you're fishing. And what's going to happen with this is, and I'll try to demonstrate this to you, is your line's going to be like this, and when the catfish hits that, that two-ounce bell, uh, two-ounce sinker in there is going to come down, and it's going to flip up just like that. So you're going to be doing this in the water. I don't know if that's off camera or not. Looks like I'm just barely on camera, but this is going to stick up just like this. And the catfish will bob it up and down. Some of it's really a big catfish. He's going to take that right down. And you can wait out the catfish because after a while he's going to get tired of trying to hold this thing down because this is full of air and this is going to float too. So you've got a lot of weight. I mean, you've got a lot of buoyancy in there. Once again, what a lot of guys will do is they will take and they will put a fluorescent tape around the top of this cap. 
And what that will do is at night when you're out there and you shine your flashlight around, you'll know if you have a fish on because you'll just barely see it if it's in the water like that. But if it's sticking up like this, bouncing up and down, you're going to see that reflective tape uh, on your flashlight bouncing up and down. Now, that's kind of an, I guess I would say, I can't really say old-fashioned because a lot of guys out there are doing it right now. We're going to do some shows with these. I think they're pretty neat and they're pretty cool. And it's, uh, maybe it's a more professional way of jug fishing. I don't know. But um, we're going you, you know, to do some shows with the, uh, with the noodles there. And uh, it'd be pretty interesting. But I really like this system. Okay, now, the conventional way is going to be rod and reel. Now, this is my favorite way to catfish, okay? I have here a 7-foot uh, medium heavy action rod. Now, guys, you don't need to go out and spend a fortune. A lot, a lot of you guys out there have got smaller rods and smaller equipment, lighter equipment. And that's fine. I'm not showing you this. You've got to go out and spend big bucks. It's just that if you're going to target big catfish, you really need to have the proper equipment for the for the type of catfish that you're targeting, okay? So I've got a um, uh, an iron reel on here, okay? A quantum iron reel. I'm using 25 pound test big game. And this is rigged with what they call the uh, conventional Santee Cooper rig. Now a lot of guys have showed you different rigs, Santee Cooper rigs. There's only really one Santee Cooper rig. If they're showing you a uh, if they're showing you a Santee Cooper rig, and it doesn't have that float in the line, it's not the original Santee Cooper rig. All right, because that float there serves a purpose. And how this is designed is is we use a a two ounce. This happens to be a two ounce flat weight that I have on there, and then I have. Let me get up here the close up camera a little bit, and see if we can get a close up shot of that a little bit better for you. I need a close-up. There we go. Um, that's a two-ounce flat sinker. And them are nice because what they will do is they will lay on the bottom of the, of the water and drag across, on the bottom, of, you know, the bottom of the lake or the river and drag across, and they won't get hung up as bad. Then I have a bead on there, and then I'm using about a 50-pound swivel. And then my leader line is about three to four feet of monofilament line. Okay, and then it comes down to my float. And then after that, I have my circle hook tied on. That's a number five circle hook. Now this float's adjustable. I'm going to tell you why it's adjustable. Because the reason they make the Santee Cooper rig this way, and it was named after the Santee Cooper Lakes, is, is that what they do, the reason for that is, is because when you're fishing, let me give you some line here so I can demonstrate this a little bit better. When you're out fishing and you're dragging this across the lake, and this is what you want to do. You want to be able to drag this. You're not drift fishing if you're not dragging this, okay? And this is going to be on the bottom of the lake. But your float and your bait, because of this right here, is actually going to be just up above a little bit, okay? It really matters. You just have to play around with the distance. The more the float is back here, the higher the bait's going to raise in the water. Um, I guess what I would do is, I would, if you're using a depth finder, I would watch my depth finder and kind of get an idea exactly where the catfish are, how deep off the, off the bottom they are, and I would try to adjust my float so that when it comes over them, it kind of puts it right in their face. But what this does, is it just keeps the bait off the bottom of the lake, and it also keeps it from getting hung up. Because when you're drift fishing like they do down on Santee Cooper and some of the other lakes, you want this weight to be pulling across the bottom, okay? Now that's the basic Santee Cooper rig. Some guys, they won't use this. There's times I won't use this float. I won't drift a whole lot and not use this float. But then you do what you got, kind of like a heavy-duty Carolina rig is what you use, okay? Now, you may not be able to use such heavy equipment if you're using smaller rods. It really depends, guys, on how you're fishing. It depends a lot on the type of equipment you're using. If you're not 
if you if you don't have a rod, a rod like this, you can't really be expected to fish with this this heavy duty of of um, of, of of a rig. Okay, you're not going to be able to use a two ounce sinker. Now, some of you guys will use them light medium action rods. You probably better cut back on your sinker. And you, you know, just, just kind of refrain and just kind of downsize a little bit because you've got to have a good stout tip. You don't want to give any slack to them fish when you get them, especially with the big catfish. It, it really depends on the kind of fish you're targeting. If you're fishing a small river or small pond or creek around your house or, or, or at home, then that's fine. Uh, just go ahead and uh, use what equipment you have, but... Um, you know, you're just not going to be able to, to use this heavy of, of, of a rig. Um, you don't have to go out and buy stuff like that if you're not, you know, a lot of you guys, I know you're fishing just ponds and little creeks and stuff, and you have a rod for that. You can use them rods, okay? Now, <clears throat> there was a different kind of, of, of um, you know, now set hook is another uh, method of fishing. That's uh, something that a lot of you guys that don't have a boat can do. What you can do by set hooking is you can just simply take and uh, what they do is the guys will go along the shoreline. They'll find trees that stick out over the water or they'll even make a pole and they'll stick it in the bank and they'll tie a line on the end of that pole and, and put their hook on and their bait and they'll throw it out and let it, you know, go down in the water. You know, you're only going to be fishing maybe in two, three feet of water because you're going to be close to shore, but that's what they call set hook. And another way to catfish is trot line, which, well, now you need to have a, a, a boat also. Well, maybe if you were in a small creek, you wouldn't have to have a boat, but a trot line is what it is. It's a big, long line that's just, that suspends from two points and has a bunch of drop lines on it. And them drop lines will come down four, five, six feet, and you tie, you, you hook your bait on there, and you just let them sit out there and you let it sit out there overnight or four or five hours, you go back and check them. It's almost like a gill net. You know, you just start pulling the thing in and take your fish off. So them are all different effective ways to catfish. And I'm sure there's a bunch of other ways that I've missed, but that just happens to be all the only ones, you know, that, I mean, we could probably talk about different techniques and ways to catfish all night long. Um, Let's talk about bait preferences, and then we're going to go here to a, a little a drift fishing. We're going to talk about drift fishing and go to that video, but let's talk about bait preferences. Oh, there's so many bait preferences, okay? Um, there's natural baits, and there's artificial baits. Now, as far as the natural baits go, I would use baits, if I'm going to, if I'm going to, and a lot of professional catfish angles will tell you that if you're going to target big catfish you're going to target big catfish you want to use the bait that is natural to the lake you're fishing meaning if you've got herring shad brim perch and fish like that that's what you really would like should use if you want to target big fish not that big fish won't bite something else but you're more liable to catch more fish on that type of bait, bigger fish on that type of bait, than you would be if you were using corn or something like that. Now, um, I've used artificial baits and I've used uh, natural baits. I'm trying to word this here so I don't offend the I don't offend the uh, natural bait fishermen. I don't offend the chicken liver fishermen. But, and, and I've caught lots of fish on each one. But I really believe that certain baits are meant for certain kinds of fish at certain times. And what I mean by that is there, I, I've been, I've, we've had times where we've gone to film down to Santee Cooper. And I have put herring on the boat, which is a very common natural bait for Santee Cooper Lakes and not got a bite. And within two hours time said, you know, we've got to do something different. We're not going to catch any fish and switched over to dip bait. And by switching over to dip bait, we started catching fish. That's a clear case of when the fish aren't actively feeding on a certain bait, 
you might be able to throw out something a little stinky, a little smelly, like a dip bait or a blood bait, and get some smell, more smell in the water, and you may be able to catch more fish that way. Um, you know, you can use live bait. You need to check with your laws and, and things like that in your state because um, some states don't allow you to do that. You know, down here we can fish with as many poles on a boat as we can. Some states, I know, you can only fish uh, some northern states with two, maybe three rods in a boat. So you may need to check on that before you start going out and throwing out a bunch of rods. But anyways, uh, you can use live bait. Um, which I prefer. You can use cut bait, which is good cut fresh bait, you know, shad, brim, things like that. Um, your flatheads primarily, and not always, your flatheads primarily are a live bait fish. They prefer live bait, but I've caught flatheads while jigging for stripers because when you're jigging, pulling that jig up and down, you've got that, that lively looking action. And I think that's what uh, I think flatheads maybe see a little bit better than the other types of catfish, and I think that flash attracts them, and they bite, they strike it just out of being natural. I've also used a brim, which I have filleted, and hooked it right on the end of the fillet, and just and threw it out on my uh, my rig that I showed you right there, and let it sit there. Throw it out in a hole or in some brush, and I've also done that and was able to. Uh, catch flatheads doing that because you've got that piece of fillet in there that's moving back and forth. It's fresh and it gives them the, uh, it resembles a live bait. Your other fish, like your Arkansas blues and channel cats, they'll eat about anything you can throw out. Live bait, dip bait, corn, hot dogs. Um, you know, I, um, if I'm going to go out and I'm going to catch, and I want to catch numbers of fish, guys, I'll always, always bring shad or herring, okay? But I will always also bring an alternative bait. And you'll find out I, I preach this a lot. It was crappy fishing. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. Um, one bait I really like and is a dip bait. Now, I never used to believe in this stuff. And what it is, the dip bait, I'll get a close-up here of this. And what the dip bait is, is you have what they call a tubi, okay? And... You can rig this either with a treble hook or with a, a single hook, like that. They come in different colors. Why, I don't know, because catfish can't see very well anyways. But anyway, you know, they, they come in different colors. And what you do is you take this dip bait, you take a wooden spoon or something, and you put it down in the jug, push it down in there real good, okay, and pack that tubi full of dip bait. And some of it stinks pretty bad, but I'm going to tell you, I never used to believe in this stuff until about 10 years ago, and I went down and tried it down the Santee, and it happened to be a time when we weren't catching any fish on uh, regular live bait, and I tried this technique, and we caught fish that day. That would have been a, a, a situation where we were going back to the uh, motel and not had a show and not caught fish, but by just having another bait and switching, we were able to... Uh, to do you know the task we set out to do but and after you get your um after you get your dip bait on there the next thing you you want to do is they say on a lot of this stuff is you want to dip it in the water and that activates what the plasma that's in it and that makes it stick to this tubi and cast it on out now when you cast this out I'm always fishing when I'm catfishing. I'm not just going out in the middle of the lake and just throwing out a rod and fishing. I'm fishing fish or I'm fishing structure. You'll want to use this and cast it out in front of a uh, structure, which might be a, a hole. You could be uh, you know, fishing a, a deep hole or a deep hole in shallow water. You could be fishing a blowdown, which is uh, trees that are blow down in the water, or snag, you know, trees and stumps that are piled up in the side. That's all places that catfish like to hide. That's where they like to stay, and they can ambush bait by being in them areas. So <clears throat> what you need to do is, is if you're going to bank fish, you can bank fish now. Let's, let's, let's talk about bank fishing a little bit. You can bank fish with this bait. 
All you got to do is you've got just to walk to different areas where you suspect is going to hold catfish in your creek. And just set your pole up and, and cast out with your dip bait and cast it out, you know, in them areas you can see. Just cast it out toward a, a tree in the water or a brush pile or a snag. Don't cast it into it, but, you know, cast it out and let this thing drop about three to six feet in front of that snag. It won't be long for a catfish will come out and he'll grab it, especially if you're fishing for a channel cast and Arkansas blues. They love this stuff. Now, you can do that. You can use this technique bank fishing. You can use it in the boat. I, I only, if I'm in a boat, I really only use the dip bait if I'm fishing in a current situation, like down to Santee, there's uh, the diversionary canal, and if they're pulling water, this works really, really good. Uh, I don't know if you can see in this jar what this looks like. I'll get a close up there of that, but that's what it looks like in the jar. And I'm not going to show it to you very long because, oh man, does it stink. The producer over there is telling me to put the cover back on, so I'm going to do it. But anyhow, uh, it's a real good product. It does really well. A lot of guys don't believe in it, but if you want to catch numbers of fish in current, and I mean rivers, I mean like a diversionary canal, there's places down to Clarks Hill Lake and places like that, that stuff works really, really good. So get you some and try it sometime. It's, you know, different, different brands. This happens to be a sunny, sticky channel cat bait, and this is a, a different one. This is a blood, and I think this is herring, and uh, one of my favorites that we started out that uh, a product sponsor on the show was Junie's Cat Tracker. Uh, they make uh, about eight different varieties of this right here, and it's a real good product. I've, I've used this, uh, but I think this works now equally as well, so I hate to say it, but they've, they've uh, progressed that far. You know, you can, other artificial baits is chicken livers. I don't care for chicken livers much. They work really good, but with chicken livers, what ends up happening is you end up having, they don't stay on the line very well. Beef liver is a little bit better. It'll stay on better. But beef livers, chicken livers, um, different things like that work good. There's uh, different varieties, you know, at the, at the box stores. You can get a different kind of packaged baits and that type of thing. You can use corn. Some guys will take corn, whole corn. They'll cook it up a little bit. And um, what they will do is make it so it's just tender. And they'll use that on their hook. That works good. Uh, another thing you can use is hot dogs. Okay, now you can take and cut up a bunch of hot dogs. I've never caught a fish, I never caught a catfish on hot dogs, guys, but they, I, I know they work. Guys have told me they've caught them. So, um, you know, you, you cut up the hot dog, and a lot of guys, what they'll do is they'll take jello and uh, flavors like cherry and strawberry, and they'll marinate the hot dogs in there. And what, what, why the catfish will come after that, I don't know, but. Um, hot dogs work supposedly work pretty good and look at it like this if you're out there fishing and you got some hot dogs that are not working and you decide to go to something else at least you've got a snack so you know you'll be all set there okay we're gonna go to a little short short clip here because I want to talk about get back to talk about drift fishing in a boat and uh, this little clip is gonna be with a buddy of mine now who's since passed away but uh, it's going to be about using a drift sock and then we'll come back and we will show you and we'll talk a little bit about a drift sock and, and what that is for those of you who don't know. So let's watch that clip. We want to take and show you we want one important piece of a big water parachute. It's like a big water parachute. Look at that. That's okay. What, that's what it does in the water. It opens up and it's, it's essentially, it's like dragging a round anchor. You okay. Know? slows the boat down it gives you direction it'll always turn you into the wind right yeah. and i know it's where it does that on this type of a boat or a pontoon boat this is a deck boat we have to fish off the front because the motor and everything else the seats are in the back and what this does is you put the rods out and it'll keep the boat going exactly parallel with the wind right. most of the time and it keeps you going at an effective speed you can put one out or you can put two out it depends on the the, the rate you want to to, to drift that. Now on the back of this drift sock, Steve, it also has an, an opening, like an orifice yeah. that you can close and open. And, and depending on the wind speed. Right, allows you to let out a certain amount of water to right. slow the boat down and speed right. up. So that's just uh, drift socks come in all different varieties and shapes and types. 
These are uh, just some really, some, some really nice ones that Steve has. They're made out of nylon. They have a float on the top and a weight on the bottom. But that's just one piece of equipment that you really need to have to effectively drift fish. Yeah, you've got to have it. Okay, um, that was a show that we did back several years ago down on Santee Cooper Lakes. And um, what we were using is what we call a drift sock. What a drift sock does is, is it uh, controls the rate of speed that you're uh, drifting in a boat. And it also keeps the boat straight. Um, they have different sizes, depends on the different size boats that you're using, okay? It depends on the wind. We've used a drift sock with no wind. We've used the drift sock when it's been white capping. So it really depends on uh, the size boat and the amount of wind. Now, them uh, certain ones there that uh, Steve had there were pretty big. I think they were like six foot round drift socks. But we were using a really big pontoon boat and the wind catches the pontoon boat very easily. And what that all the drift sock really does, guys, is if you didn't have one, you would be at the mercy of the wind, drifting around, floating sideways with no control over the boat. A drift sock will, number one, keep your boat straight, drifting in the direction you want to drift, so your rods stay out good and straight. And number two, what it's going to do is it's going to control your rate of speed. Now, I like a, two, a .2 to a .4 mile an hour drift is what I like to have when I'm drift fishing. There's been times we've been out drift fishing and I've had to actually use the trolling motor to move the boat fast enough. Drift fishing is a very, very effective way to catch catfish because what you're doing is you're going along with your depth finder and you're marking and you're plotting on your, on your map a certain area where there's fish. And what, then what you do is you turn your boat around, you come all the way back where you mark them fish, you put out your rod, you put out your, your um, drift sock, and you drift right back over them fish. And that's usually a productive way to catch large fish, and it's usually a productive way to catch numbers of fish. I don't use the dip baits when I'm doing that. I, well, sometimes I have because sometimes the herring or the shad just doesn't work. And I've thrown them out. I've thrown out the rods with dip bait and drifted with it, and it's worked. So, you know, there, you know, numbers of fish, this will catch big fish, but it's not going to catch a lot of big fish, okay? But numbers of fish, you want to use a stink bait. Um, Big, big fish, if you're going to target big, big fish, you want to use uh, live bait and things like that. That's just what I and a lot of other guys out there believe. Um, what time we got here? Been on about 30 minutes. Anybody have any questions? I guess you might as well shoot them at us right now. Um, you know, you don't have to be a professional fisherman to go catch catfish. You can catch them with any kind of bait, you know, you go to the store and get yourself some, some livers, go and get yourself a bucket of worms or whatever, um, frozen shad, and go sit by the creek and catch catfish. That's the way they've been doing it for 50, 60, 100 years. So, um, you know, that that's the best way I can describe it, I guess. But um, we're going to be having another drawing coming up here on um, April, right around April the 10th, okay? And it's gonna be sponsored by Caleb over to Table Rock Outdoors. And Caleb's got a nice big kind of Bass Pro Shops type uh, fishing store over there, hunting and fishing, an outdoor oriented store. So he's gonna be giving some, uh, sponsoring some really nice items for us to give away on the show. So we're probably gonna be having something from Table Rock Outdoors on our next drawing. Uh, I'm not sure, I uh, will go ahead and I will advertise it here on YouTube, as well as Facebook and Instagram, um, when we're gonna have it and what we're gonna be doing, probably in another week or so, but it's gonna be right around the 10th of April. I know I have a April 14th in fishing engagement on Clark's Hill that I just cannot wait much longer to go, but um, we're going to be having, the, we'll probably start the drawing around the 10th, somewhere in there, maybe on the 10th, and carry it through for that week, 
and maybe draw on that Monday or Tuesday. But I don't know what we're going to be having. Uh, I'm going to go meet with the man here, and he's going to sponsor some stuff. And we're glad to have Caleb aboard and um, helping us out on the show, as well as our many other sponsors that we have. So that's draw. we're going to have that drawing. Um, I don't know how many people were watching tonight. I hope you enjoyed the... Uh, this little segment right here, I apologize that uh, the gentleman from Bigfoot Base wasn't able to make it, but something came up, and we just figured, look, you know, I didn't want to leave people hanging wondering what was going on, so I just thought I'd go ahead and run the live stream and just wing it on my own. So I, I hope I was able to once again show you some more tips and techniques that I use catfishing. I know a lot of you guys probably have watched a lot of our shows on YouTube and on television, and you've seen we do we do do a fair amount of catfishing. So it's one of the things we like to do, as well as striper fishing, uh, trout fishing, bass fishing, you name it. If it swims, we like to go out and try to try to put it in the boat. So thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, comments, please like our uh, comment down here at the bottom of the screen. You'll be able to comment at the bottom of the page. Uh, if you would like to uh, subscribe to our page, we really would like you to subscribe to our page. And hopefully we'll have another guest here in another couple of weeks when we do the next segment. And I don't know, it might be, we might have the gentleman from the Triad Bait Company. We might get Caleb in here from um, uh, Table Rock Outdoors. And... Um, so, you know, we'll we'll just wing it, and we'll just see. Uh, we'll have it, we'll have a guest here in a couple of weeks. So, thanks a lot, guys, for tuning in. It's been great bringing this little webinar to you. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you learned a little something. We were able to show you a few things. There's all. I mean, I could probably go on all night talking about catfishing, but um, there's probably a lot of stuff I forgot. You just never seemed. There's always some new technique or some new fad going on with it when it comes to any kind of fishing, but thanks a lot for tuning in, guys. It was great uh, having you join us tonight, and we appreciate you watching. Like always, I'm Jim from Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV Live. We will catch you somewhere next week uh, or in a few more weeks in the great outdoors when we do it all again. Thanks for tuning in. You have to hit that little box that comes up.